Okay, good morning. So this is the second video of me working with this block of material. And in this one, I did just a straight um, reprint 1940s pattern. It is this pattern, which is eight, uh, Simplicity 8447. And it is just a simple blouse pattern with some gathering at the top. Um, where the front meets the back and then it just has a pleat in the back and some toes. I do like this pattern. Um, so next time I will probably drop this arm side a little bit because it tends to uh, be a little bit tight there. Uh, again, I finished all the sleeves. Uh, I finished all the seams. I did French seams on the arms. I did French seams on the sides and everywhere I could. And then I turned in this uh, hand stitch the hem. So yes, uh, I hope you enjoy watching this video. It is uh, it was rather kind of fun to do because I ended up making two bosses instead of just one. Um, I will see you all next time. Oh, on this pattern I also uh, lengthened the cuff. How I did that was I just cut uh, two extra of the cuff so that it was twice as large. I like how it's been So yes, so, I will see you all next time. If you have any co comments, questions, feel free to leave them down below. Leave it in, she. Oh, first of all, good morning. But second of all, here I am getting ready to put the giant pleat in the back. So what this is, is basically it takes the center back off of the center back and gives a three inch wide uh, pleat in the back. So it's three inches off the edge. And what this is, is just a uh, box pleat. So you will sew these two spots, leaving that middle part open. And then just press the ever living heck out of it. And uh, then you will open it up so that it lays flat. And then you will have a box pleat. And then I am also at the same time doing these little tucks at the side, which is just sew that little part down and let the rest of it hang free. I do not show a lot of finishing work in this particular video simply because I was doing a lot of it off camera. I did a lot of hand work, uh, especially with the hems and the arm side. So once that was, uh, the only other finishing I had to do was uh, French seams on the shoulders and on the uh, sides. The front edge here that you see how I finished that was I just sewed a quarter of an inch away from the edge, turned it under, or just, you know, turned it down, and then zigzagged over that edge. So, technically you could use a straight stitch, but I figured doing a zigzag would hold it better, and also keep it from fraying. I have washed this shirt and the other one I've made since I've made them, and they both, um, did not fray at all. They held up. The okay. I'm trying to. Do, oh, I'm setting the uh, tucks in the front, which is again, you just sew that little bit between the first and the last pin, and just sew a straight line and uh, sew back and forwards over the edges. And here is that box pleat. Here I am, I've gather, gathered up the shoulders, so I'm matching up the uh, markings and the edges at the sew point. So you only gather down about maybe two inches. It's not a lot of gather, but it does, it is all the, uh, basically one of the bus starts. So I gathered this down, wrong side to wrong side, so that I could French seam this. And this does hold it really well. I made sure to put the gathering in uh, far enough forward that even though I'd have to remove the gathering stitches, it would allow me to do French seam. So 
the lower gathering line I know is outside of the uh, seam allowance for any of these, but I figured it would work well, and it did. None of the gathering is bunched up too much. Basically, it looks the way I want it to. The one thing I did change about this pattern is I did a contrast collar and cuffs. I did them out of a little bit of the excess of black linen I have. And those, you will see this fabric again in the next two videos, which are me making a pair of sailor shorts and a next pair of sailor pants. And if you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, you will, when you hear sailor, you will think sailor moon, not sailor isn't going on the seas. But hey, nostalgia. So yes, contrast in color and cuffs out of black linen, and this linen, as long as you don't dry it on a high temperature, it does not um, shift too much. It does not pill. So, yay. <sighs> it was just the black linen from Joann's that I found on sale. Yay, sales. But yes. So, before you sew up the side seams, you put on the collar and then you do the facings. You do have to pay attention to this area on this pattern because it is three quarter inch seam lines. So what I do is I baste quarter of an inch from the edge so that it um, holds. I also do this part in black thread so it does not show against the black linen. As opposed to doing white. But I just thought a black, a black and white polka dot on the whole top of me would be a little much so I grounded it with this um, black linen. As opposed to doing the whole thing in black and white like I did my short sleeve. But that's short sleeve, not long sleeve. So I'm trying to be extra finicky and get this laying just right so that when I baste it, I don't have to worry about, say, a little bit of extra fabric getting tucked up. But I still do have to pay attention to the fabric when I'm sewing, which is why I stopped filming while I sew. Until I can get one of those really short mounts for just the table. Okay, and here I am establishing the facing. So one of the tricks I learned to doing this is uh, the unmarked, unnotched side matches the unnotched side. So if that helps at all, that's how I do it. I also steamed open the uh, steamed open the seam allowance, and then as you can see here, that edge is now completely finished. Which is, I sewed a quarter of an inch away from the edge, turned it over, and then zigzagged it down. That just helps all that from uh, fraying when you wash it or wear it. I know it took me a long time to figure out how to finish a lot of these edges. Uh -huh. For long seams, long straight seams, I tend to work do a uh, French seam because it holds and it encapsulates all the edges that we want to fray on. I did a couple pens doing this, but it looks really nice, so I'm not going to hold it. Once this is shown with the 3 8 inch seam allowance, then you want to press it and then understitch it or you <coughs> move on to the next part. The next part is sewing up the side seams. Again, I just seamed it, sewed it wrong sides to wrong sides, pressed open that seam allowance the whole thing so it made a nice piece of edge and then sewed three quarter inch seam allowance which if you add it together is five inch seam allowance and then I uh, pressed that seam so that the threads would incorporate and then I was ready to do the main 
turn up sleeves. Sleeves. So the sleeves I fetch through this one. So when I'm sent to the wrong sides, then press open, press run, run uh, right sides to right sides. So press finish sleeve. Uh, sleeve. Oh no, I didn't fetch some of these things because I've got an opening in. So, because of this opening, I turned and sewed down the sleeve buttons, which made it so that the, uh, I finished off the edge of the sleeve at the same time. So here I am doing cuffs. So I did do a double cuff. What I mean by double cuff is instead of just doing one of these, I did, uh, two for each sleeve and then do a 5 inch seam allowance on each end so it's double the size of one of the regular cups which i like better than the single sliver if i ever figure out how i will do a different style of this but i like it so it works so here I'm just gathering down the end of the sleeve because this is a bishop style sleeve. Into the cuff. I will then sew around the edge of the cuff. I will then finish the inside of the cuff with hand seaming, which I don't think I did on camera. Because I just went in and slip stitched the cuff to the sleeve. Once that's done, the sleeve will be ready to put into the uh, shirt. And doing that, I match the top of the shoulder point to the top of the arm of the sleeve. And then I pin the rest of it until I get to the end of the gathering threads and then I just gather up the top of the sleeve. How I finished the arm side was turning in the seam allowances towards the seam itself and then whip stitched around that edge just to finish it up because I am trying to be a little bit more diligent about finishing my seams. I apologize, I thought you'd be able to, oh, when I put it down there, you can see it, I guess. So I start by matching up the, um, bottom of the sleeve, and pin it until I get to the gathering threads, and then I match up the top of the shoulder, and then just gather it all down into the arm side. Once that's done, I sew it. I, do, I tend not to press my shoulder seams simply because I work with them a lot. It's a lot of hand sewing for me. I do sew the sew it, um, the initial seam by hand or by machine, but then I do the rest of the finishing for the shoulder uh, arm side uh, by hand. And it does take longer, but it does, uh, I notice, tend to last and wear well. But once that is done, I have already uh, finished the hemming by hand, and how I did that was sewed a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the hem, and then turned it, turn it under twice. So the first time, you still have a top edge. If you turn it again, then you've got a clean edge which is uncut fabric so it does not fray on you. I then went around and hand stitched that down so that it would uh, leave a nice crisp edge so that even when I wash it I don't have to worry about it and it shows less when I'm wearing it. Now I do tend to wear my blouses tucked into whatever I'm wearing whether it's a skirt or pants but I like to have a nice clean edge and I'm working on my hand sewing skills and fin uh, working on finishing off my garments better. So, that is what, it's, what it is. I will say that I'm not to the point of doing hand buttonholes, but I also probably don't have heavy enough thread to do hand buttonholes. So I will stick to thread or bound buttonholes for now. 
So once you've finished all those steps, you will be done. I will say that this is a rather easy pattern to do, and that if you are starting out, this may be a little bit easier for you to get because it does tucks instead of darts, and it does uh, introduce you to gathering, and it is just a very decent pattern to use. So here I am tucking in my blouse because again, I tuck my blouses. I'm just pairing this with a plain black skirt. You could wear this with a black jumper. You could wear this with a pair of pants, a pair of shorts if you want. Uh, you can just wear this as a general everyday blouse. It is a very nice improvement to my wardrobe. I will back up here in a second and let you see. So, as you see, there's the back dart. There is the front. I will say that I am very broad shoulders, so I never put in the um, shoulder pads because my shoulders are broad as it is and they just don't seem to be moving. So it's. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you all next time. Bye.